I am your host, Nicole Will, and we thank you for joining us as we navigate the world with your aging loved one. We are here to come alongside elders, family members, and the senior living community as we explore the world of aging and elder care with helpful resources, informative interviews, and approachable conversations. We get to do this together, so join us on our journey, and this is the Will Gather Podcast. In this episode, we have the privilege of talking with Nigel Mould. He is the CEO of StackCare. They are an innovative passive monitoring system for older adults and vulnerable people. They really believe in making the difference in caregivers' lives by preserving their loved ones' independence and dignity. So we talk about that today. We look at how do we really make a difference in our caregivers' lives. He has created a company that is also international. They are in the UK and nationally here in the US. He is an innovative executive. StackCare has a unique take on using this state-of-the-art passive monitoring system, letting seniors age in place, using discrete infrared motion sensors and AI data science to analyze and highlight unusual patterns that may indicate health issues, a fall, sending notifications directly to families on their mobile devices. It's StatCare's mission to make a difference every day in the lives of families. We are so happy to introduce to you Nigel Mould. Nigel, thank you for joining us. We're so happy you're here. Tell us, how have all of your past experiences led you to create the care technology for older adults? What is your story and what brought you to today? Well, first of all, thanks for having having me here, Nicole. Um, I, I think like most people, you know, we all have parents. Right. And as, as I was getting older, my parents obviously started to get older and older. Um, and it wasn't just me, but the people that I was working with as well. And we were looking at a lot of the data and things that we'd been using. And uh, it was actually our data scientist at the time. She said, well, hey, we've got all of this. I'd love to use this to keep an eye on my mom and dad and her parents. And I was like, well, this would be really good for my parents too. And then everybody started chiming in and saying, yeah, it's our own personal experiences. And sooner or later, the reality is that all of us are going to have, you know, my mother was going through a very hard time with when my father's cognitive abilities were declining. He was developing Alzheimer's as well as some dementia and sundowning. And so stack care as an idea early on would have been really useful at that time to have helped keep an eye on him and his habits and behaviors and how they were changing. But, you know, recognizing the whole concept of of what people call the silver tsunami, that's Mm -hmm. the aging baby boomers. Um, Every one of us, every 72 million baby boomers will have turned 65 by the end of this decade. And there's only around 2 million nursing home beds across North America. So if, unless somebody gets building really fast and a lot of bedrooms, we're going to be aging in place. We're going to be aging at home. We're going to rely on, on relatives and our children to help take care of us, um, which is quite a scary thought. But you know, for those of us that are in that position already, looking at our, our aging parents and saying, how do we help keep an eye on them? The, the stress level is enormous. And, and that's why we set out to try and do something about it, not just for ourselves, but yeah. for the millions and millions of people who are going to be going through this in the coming years. And not only is there that huge need, like you had mentioned, but I also feel like that is the desire most people have is to really age in their home as long as they can. And being able to address that in a safe way. One of the things that really drew me to your company was your mission to uphold the dignity of older adults. I think a lot of times there are options, but it doesn't always respect that privacy and that dignity. If you can walk us through how does stat work? How does it function to be able to do that so well? Well, you're absolutely right about that's where most of us want to age, first of all. Um, There was an AARP study, I think it was 2020, it might have been 2019, that said that 90% of seniors want to age in their own homes. 
But the same study also said that more than 60% of their children had concerns about that choice. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a mismatch in there There somewhere that that we need to account for. Mm -hmm. But what Stack Care does is we essentially take the exact same technology that opens the, the grocery store door for you or the gas station door. It says, hey, there's motion here, there's somebody there, and it opens the door. And we've been used to that technology for a number of years, but what we're doing, instead of just saying, oh, there's motion, open the door, what we're doing is looking at high speed at all of the different motions that you're doing and looking at your patterns, learning your individual patterns, and then saying, okay, something's up today. Nicole is not acting the way she normally does. And it using artificial intelligence to interpret that data and then to be saying, should we be sending the family member, the caregiver now, a notification saying, hey, something is wrong? And some of these things are easier than others. You know, if, if somebody is in the bathroom at 2 a.m. for 30 minutes, I don't really care what age they are, there's probably an issue, right? Um, but certainly if it's somebody who's over 70 or 75 or 85, whatever, there's an issue there. Some of it is a little more difficult. How did you sleep last night? Is there a change in bathroom habits? Is there a change in sleeping habits? Is there a change in activity? Um, But a lot of those things can be a real indicator of a a problem before it becomes an emergency. And that's the way, a lot of the way we look at dignity is, is just saying, hey, the worst thing for anybody is to be in an emergency situation. Nobody likes to, if you like, press the emergency button to be calling 911, this sort of thing, but allow some intervention, which is much better than response of having somebody go, hey, Nicole, I see you're not sleeping that well. How are you feeling today? Is everything okay? You know, and checking in early on. Um, and because of the simple infrared technology we're using, there's no cameras, there's no microphones, you're not forced to wear anything, you don't have to worry about re- recharging batteries. It's as unobtrusive as your home security system. Mm -hmm. It's really just looking at motion. And the other thing is, of course, it's non-judgmental, right? Because it doesn't see whether you're a woman or a man, and it doesn't see if you're sitting in the middle of the day wearing your lime green pajamas. Mm -hmm. The system doesn't care. All it's looking at is your motion pattern. We all want to live in that no free judgment zone, I think. (laughs) Such a great thing you highlighted was the, it can be a catalyst for conversation. Talking on that point of what conversations can happen based on the data, how also reliable is that data that comes to families and caregivers? It's an interesting question because I'm often asked, but the data is the data, right? Mm -hmm. So... If you're, you know, if it tells me that that my mom is sleeping for eight hours a night, that's great. And it might be telling me she's sleeping for seven hours, 45 minutes or for eight hours, 15 minutes. And it doesn't matter whether the real data is eight hours, 14 minutes or eight hours, 60 minutes. You don't need that level of accuracy. Mm -hmm. Um, And so she might have said, well, I was awake at that time, but I was dozing in bed. It doesn't matter. It's the restful time period that's important. And it's not a difference of, oh, the system tells me she was sleeping for eight hours, but she was only sleeping for five. That doesn't happen. The reliability level, the intelligence that goes into the data science is extremely reliable. Um, and, uh, you know, some of it is is simply down to the inbuilt clock, if you like, the inbuilt stopwatch. And I'd mentioned, uh, you know, if somebody was in the bathroom at 2 a.m. But I can tell you from experience, If you're over 75 and between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m., you're in the bathroom for longer than 13 minutes, there's a 98% certainty there's something wrong, right? Because most of us, if we get up in the night, we go into the bathroom out again, we're done, Mm -hmm. right? If you're in there for longer than 13 minutes and you're above a certain age, it's pretty much guaranteed there's an issue. And, uh, you know, honestly... It may not apply to us, to those of us who are younger. Maybe we're out partying, you know, and we're up late. But <laughs> but once you get past that 70, 75 years old, yeah. we're pretty the, the set history routines, that we have yeah. makes the data very reliable. Right, yeah. it does. We have this new category in our lives now, which is COVID. Are you finding that that is affecting how people are 
aging in place and highlighting the need for more oversight. What are you seeing with that? It's a difficult one because, you know, and I, we don't like to talk about oversight because it, mm-hmm. it's really about care and mm-hmm. caring and it's about how we react to, mm-hmm. to situation. So, yes, there is potentially even more stress in that caregiver situation today Mm -hmm. but you know i know when i I, I talk with my mom and so i hear some of the same things from their colleagues is it gets a little depressing when every conversation with your parent is how are you feeling are you doing all right are you feeling okay Have, have you got oh have you had that checked have you had a test um and it becomes all consuming in the conversation and it would be much better if, you know, if we're calling up your mom and saying, hey, mom, you still got that recipe for the cake I used to like when I was a kid? Or for, hey, let's talk about the grandchildren and everything else. That's a level of emotional care that we all need, and especially when we're perhaps retired and living on our own, rather than the everyday conversation about how am I feeling today? You know, we, it, it, it's as much as we care, we have to kind of, kind of take a step back and try not to keep asking mom or dad, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? But give them some of the emotional care that we were giving them before COVID. Um, and, and we kind of really need to bring that back a little, I think, as well. Um, hopefully that's something that Stack Care can help with. Right. Um, because, you know, I, I can take a look at my phone and see how mom is doing. I don't have to ask her all the time. Yeah. And that makes for a different conversation. Yeah, that's such a good point that you bring up because those conversations are so important to have. And you you called it that emotional care. And that's where you really get to build a relationship and share those emotions and have conversations that are outside of the the caretaking aspect of it. It's really just about bonding and sharing stories and that's what you get to focus on. So I really, really like that you touched on looking at it that way. That's really important. Well I think I think one of the important things for all of us is, is understanding that there you know, there's a kind of physical loneliness mm-hmm. that a lot of people have experienced in the last twelve months and, and continue to do so. Um but that shouldn't necessarily be an emotional loneliness at the same time. Right. We can be alone physically, but emotionally we can still be together with other people. Yes, that's very true. And we've learned to exercise that new muscle a little bit right now. We're all in, you know, physically exactly. not yeah. being able to be present with people, but emotionally are maintaining those connections as best we can. Exactly. So we've talked about how stat care functions in the home. You also are able to utilize it in senior living and home care agencies. What does that look like for those different environments? How are you seeing that it's being used successfully? Well, in the, in, uh, Senior communities, whether it's independent or assisted living memory care, um, the great thing is is that that is allowing caregiver staff to a little bit greater insight into the resident's health and well-being um, in an environment where they may be trying to reduce direct contact, particularly because of COVID and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, and we've seen with the home care agencies, um, one of the big challenges in the whole industry today is staffing because the number of us who are are aging, all those baby boomers I talked about at the beginning, you know, they're retiring. They want to age in place. We need more caregivers than ever before. And that's a big challenge. So, you know, the thinner you spread your caregivers, the risk is you're going to get a lower standard of care. So they can use technology to make sure they maintain or even raise that standard of care by focusing where it's needed and when it's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, as I, I would like to say, intervention is better than response. I think I already said it once today, but yeah. um, you know, if you can see that there's a problem developing, you can react quickly to it. And that's where we're being able to help home care agencies and uh, nursing home senior living communities in terms of response there. Um, 
slowly but surely, um, you know, we we pivoted last year to try and make our product available to people at home, um, and that side of our business also growing. Um, one of the issues has been, of course, is that people having to visit mom's house to install the system. Yeah. But um, you know, as vaccines uh, spread, as more and more people get vaccinated, then the opportunities are coming up and we're starting to see more and more people saying, yeah, I, I want to have something in place that I can see if mom or dad or grandma, whoever it is, my aging relatives are doing okay. Are they sleeping okay? Am I getting informed if, they, if, they, if there's a problem in the bathroom in the middle of the night? Um, and I, I, I think people recognize some of these things that um, you know, most falls take place at night. That's statistically true. It takes place at night, first thing in the morning. Uh, more than 80% of falls it tends to be when other people aren't around, right? So there's things like that that help, whether it's professional caregivers or whether it's family caregivers. Um, it just helps that peace of mind, that extra level of security to know that if something has happened, I can respond. Um, but if there's something developing, I can respond before it becomes that crisis. So. Yeah, it's that idea of being proactive instead of reacting in a crisis. You're able to establish or even look at what's a baseline, right? So then you've got that baseline and yeah. know what is out of the norm, what can we talk about or address in the future. Exactly. And, you know, we're often asked, uh, sometimes the seniors themselves want to have the step care app on their phone and they want to see their own data oh, which is great yeah. i mean yeah how long did i sleep last night oh yeah and it's mm -hmm. yeah yeah and the system is, we don't see anything but but you know, it's an easy way to talk about it the system sees you know i had i had 19 bathroom visits yesterday is that normal mm -hmm. we always say there is no normal mm -hmm. there's only what is typical for you or what is typical for me or what is typical for somebody else right. it's not important whether you went in and out of the bathroom six times yesterday or 19 times. Mm -hmm. What's important is whether that changes from day to day yeah. or from night to night. That's what gives the indicator that something is wrong. Yeah. Well, and what also spoke to me was seeing how simple it is to use. It wasn't that barrier of entry of there's so many pieces and it's so complex. It really is not intrusive. It's not placed in ways where there's going to be cords or you've got an app on your phone, correct? And you've got a sensor. Yep. How else would you describe the, how simple it is for people to have it in their home? Generally speaking, it, it's faster and easier to set up than a home security system. Right? Um, it, it, essentially, it's, you, know, you plug in the gateway that connects to the internet. Um, and that, so we have all that motion data out there in the cloud that we're then able to work with. It's all anonymized and secure, but the sensors themselves are about two and a half inches high and about one inch wide. You can imagine how small that is. Not much bigger than, than a man's thumb. And the battery operated, batteries last for a couple of years. And once those are popped up in the corner of the room, that's it. And, and our experience is that the residents may, may remember it's there for the first day or two. And then after a couple of days, they even forget it's there. And in the same way as if I said to you, you know, you've got a home security system, where are the sensors? You'd have to scratch your head and think, think about, about it. it. That's how most people are with stack care. Yeah. You know? yeah it's, it's up there and I just forget about it. Right. You know? And, and that, that's how it should be. That's what, that's what helps that personal dignity mm -hmm. as well. It's not of thinking I'm not being watched or monitored. Stack care is take, helping my caregiver take care of me. Yes. Do you find that sometimes people feel a little bit overwhelmed with the term AI or the technology side of things? What's the one thing you could say that could give people peace of mind if they're thinking about using something to make their caregiving journey a little bit easier? I think, yeah, you know, artificial intelligence, AI, it, it, it can be a little scary because we're all used to watching science fiction movies and right. thinking of robots doing things and, and you know, super intelligent. Um, but what it really is, is a really, really fast way for us to interpret data, right? much faster than you and I could do things manually. You know, if we were sitting there calculating okay, how long did mom sleep and how does that compare to the last few nights? How does that compare to the last week, last month? Hmm, should we be taking a note of this? Yes or no, let's look through the data, what's typical. 
but AI does it in a fraction of a second. That's the point. Um, and uh, it allows that super fast reaction and just giving us the result, which is what we as caregivers ourselves uh, or with the, just with senior family members who might be thousands of miles away, we just want to know, right? Is mom okay? Is grandma okay? Is dad sleeping right? Good. That's all I want to know. Um, but all artificial intelligence is doing and all the machine learning engine is doing is doing those millions of calculations every second. Um, and when, when, when I was talking to one of our engineers recently about the signals, the, 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 the speed of the signals between the sensor and the gateway. Um, and we were talking in speeds of two milliseconds, that's two one thousandths of a second going between them. And uh, first of all, I said, is that that's two seconds? They said, no, two milliseconds. Yeah. And that's when you start to realize how fast all of this is working. It is. I think we generally would think of it's going to help give me data with the restroom, right? That's a common one or falling, yeah. sleeping. But I read something recently about your company that spoke to the kitchen and the fridge use. And I thought that was such a yeah. unique way to look at nutrition. Tell us a little bit more about that in terms of what are those success stories where you've seen it be really beneficial that can monitor things that we're not even aware of. Sure. Um, I'll give you a, a, a personal one um, and, and very simple one. You know, when my, when my father was, he passed away about two years ago, but when, as his Alzheimer's was, was developing, um, you know, it's like I was visiting and about 10 o'clock in the morning, he was like, oh, you know, what are we having for breakfast? And my mom said, yeah, but you had breakfast an hour ago. And, and that happens with Alzheimer's and you don't necessarily realize, but it's just as easy and, and fairly common for seniors to forget to eat mm -hmm. or forget to hydrate. And, you know, we have one of the things our sensors do is also tell you the room temperatures. So we were seeing last summer out in, in the West Coast, the extreme heat that was there, a number of notifications going out that this resident or that resident's room temperatures were going way too high. So um, we had one last winter uh, in the Northeast here where somebody, an, an elderly lady thought she'd closed her bedroom window and it obviously swung open again, but the temperature dropped more than 40 degrees in two minutes inside the bedroom. Oh, if a notification hadn't gone out, she could have become hypothermic very quickly. But yeah. all of these things come back to nutrition. If it's hot, if people are, are sweating, are they hydrating? Mm -hmm. Are they remembering to eat? Are they going into the kitchen? So we're working also on some new ideas, always trying to improve our product, saying, did Nicole go into the kitchen this morning? Has she opened the refrigerator? Or is this a no breakfast day? Mm -hmm. And does a no breakfast day deserve a notification mm -hmm. to her caregiver? There's things like that we can look at. Uh, but you know, very simply right now, you can open up the StatCare app and it will show you the number of visits to the kitchen. It shows you how many refrigerated openings there were in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, whether there was any at night. You can see the patterns there during the week. You can see if there's any big changes. We test the system constantly at home. And it's very funny because if my wife has a baking day, you, you see the refrigerated door jump from about 20 to 50. Um, so there's, there's things like that that you know, you don't need an awful lot of interpretation. It's just there. You can see the kitchen is being used, the refrigerator is being used, that's all good. Eventually, we hope to start looking even deeper and, and coming up with more notifications for perhaps repetitive behaviors that may not be typical. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our patterns, but Alzheimer's lead, often leads to increasing repetition. Mm -hmm. And if we can identify some of those, then we could also perhaps start to take notifications to a whole different level in the future as well. Yes. I could have used that where I'm in a state where we are, I think it's negative 11 degrees right now. So leaving a door open <laughs> would cause <laughs> would cause a lot of problems. I think it's always very helpful to have things in place, especially our mobility always is doing as well when we're aging and to be able to not miss the door handle is important. 
Yes. So if we're going to end on a note of hope, I always like to leave my listeners with some encouragement. And what could you offer those families and those older adults? Where do you feel like this future of care technology is going and why should we look at adopting that? Well, I think that, you know, the big thing on whether it's stack care or whether it's other technology, the reality is, as we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. there are huge numbers of us retiring uh, already and in the next decade. And we're not all going into senior living communities. They're just, there's nowhere near enough bedrooms uh, out there. So we're going to be aging in place, which is what most of us want to do, but we want to be independent. And we want to cause our families and our children the minimum amount of stress. Um, And they want us to live independently and with dignity and and hopefully knowing that everything is okay with us. And that is where technology suits both of us because uh, technology can allow us to age in place knowing that if something goes wrong, somebody will see it, somebody will respond uh, without it being too obtrusive no, I don't want cameras in my bedroom or bathroom. Nobody does. But right. smart technology can enable us to, to feel secure in that environment. And for our families, it's peace of mind. That's it. It, it, it delivers purely that for them. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I, I think there's a level of trust in technology uh, amongst the, the kind of younger generation now that says, yep, I'm going to trust this and so I know what's happening there. Right. Um, and, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I agree with that. We also, I've seen such a shift where there is more technology, it's being more adopted. And we as an industry, I feel like have to, for lack of a better term, come up with, the, you know, be with the times in the sense that we are all using technologies. I do all of my life on my phone and I'm able to manage that. And if we aren't shifting to meet the needs of our older adults using technology effectively, we're going to be behind the mark because the demand is going to be, this is the the norm. This is how we use that. So I think it's encouraging. I think we're, as a society, definitely adopting that more and more, and it's going to be going to be the status quo absolutely and i think the big thing for all of us now is is, you know as i said earlier i'm I'm a baby boomer too but as we all look forward to our retirement over the next 10 years or so you know i'm wearing an apple watch right now a lot of other people do and Mm -hmm. things like that we're probably going to be the first generation that's going into our retirement years very comfortable with technology but the reality is we just want it to work. We want to put it up there. We want it to work. We want it to be unobtrusive. Yeah. Um, and we want it to be simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's going to be the technology we've got today, but a little easier. You know, the true idea of plug and play. Mm-hmm. Put it up and forget about it. Yeah. That That's what it should be. Yeah. The best of both worlds. Simple and non-invasive. <laughs> Thank exactly. You. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much for your time today, your really great insight, and we will direct people to your website and where they can learn more and find out more about Stat Care. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much. Yes, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, you can learn a lot more about Stat Care at, at stack.care. It's not .com. It's .care. And uh, I think there's a lot of useful stuff on there, whether you buy our products or not. There's a lot of things about hints about talking to mom and dad about technology and systems. Um, And we try and help people, whether they're our customers or not, makes no difference to us. We've got a mission to try and help uh, support that independence that seniors want and the peace of mind that family wants. Yes, a great resource, truly. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. If you enjoyed our episode, please subscribe and give us five stars. (laughs) In all honesty, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening to our episode.